Welcome back to another episode of JP25 Conversations. I got a special guest here today, Dago Esparza. What's up, my man? Hey, what's up, bro? He is the stock market slash cryptocurrency genius that I had to bring in because I don't know shit. So he's going to teach me today how to invest. And it's something I always wanted to do, man. I'm the guy that doesn't know anything. I watch M- MSNBC and it's might as well be in Mandarin because I have no idea what they're saying. So he's going to teach me a little bit about what's going on. And then after today, I'm going to start investing. So let's just start from the very beginning. How old were you when you first got into the stock market? Dude, um, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, dude, I was young. I was just right out of high school, uh, 18, 19 year old kid, just wanting to figure out how to make some money on the side. Just already tired of my job. Yeah. A couple of weeks in, you know, bagging groceries. And I was over it already, dude. <laughs> yeah. So you, um, so how much did you take out of your check to invest when you first started? Uh, at that point, I, I mean, I didn't have much, and mm-hmm. I was living with my parents. So I didn't really have anything to worry about. So I kind of like I had a thousand bucks saved up, and I just put a thousand bucks in the market. You put a thousand bucks from the very beginning, just from the get go, bro. I've never heard of anybody doing that much. I'm, people always put like a few dollars, but why did you think a thousand was the best bet? Did you do your research and you knew where you're going with your money? Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just figured, you know, I got nothing to lose. You know, if I lose a thousand bucks, what's a thousand dollars to someone who's rich, you know, nothing. And, yeah. And if I wanted to eventually, you know, you know, see myself as, you know, the successful guy, I had to, you know, take big risks. And yeah. Right. I just did it, you know, at first, you know, don't get me wrong. I wasn't like a heavy hitter, like, you know, taking great risks from the get go. I had the money there, but I wasn't investing the whole thing. Okay. So what was the thing you invested in? Uh, the first thing I ever invested in was, you know, after just talking to buddies over high school, you know, and like just being wanting to get into it for so long, I I got a tip that the Pollo Loco <laughs> was going public, and I thought, hey, this is it. I know this brand. I don't even know if it's you know a good investment, but I I I read some books or not. Warren Buffett said, invest what you know. Okay. And I just I went all in Pollo Loco. Within the first hour, I had already made a hundred bucks, and I was hooked. Yeah. Never looking back again. Okay. So um, that's interesting. So Warren Buffett, is he the guy that you look for as your mentor, you would say? Not really, dude. He's honestly at this point, he's old. He's a successful guy. He's an amazing guy. Can't talk. Can't talk bad about this guy, but yeah, like he's he's overrated at this point. At this point, really, you yeah. think he's overrated just because he's so old? He's not in the game. Like he's uh, not in the game. He's not in the game. His his company Berkshire Hathaway, you know, uh, is not even run by him. His his advisors and his traders do all the all the investing. Okay, so who's uh, who's your mentor? I mentor. I got a couple guys on Twitter. <laughs> okay, yeah. You, okay, so you, I'm glad you brought that. You mentioned me before the show that Twitter is where you find a huge part of what you do. Mm-hmm. When, why why do you think Twitter is ahead of other news sources when it comes to investing? It's just raw information. There's no need to edit. You okay. Know, if someone's wrong. Someone's wrong. And you know you got a million voices speaking at the same time, and that creates market sentiment. So what I do, what I what what I learned when I first got on Twitter. Uh, I actually just made Twitter just for stocks. And really? Even out to this day, I don't really follow friends or family. Just strictly like what's going on, news, you know, mm-hmm. even when, you know, our previous president, now we follow the, the, the shit he said, you know, like, because yeah. it, it moves markets and, and I, that's how you just keep, you know, current with what's going on. Okay. So besides Twitter, do you look at certain people on, t- uh, well, it's still on Twitter, like Elon Musk. Is he somebody you definitely follow and look towards? Absolutely. I have his alerts. If he says something, I have it like instantaneously. Okay. Uh, a couple of days ago, actually, what's going on on TV, um, the, the huge GameStop craze, I'll get into it later, but uh, Elon Musk sets, uh, put a tweet out and I was, I went all in actually. <laughs> really? GameStop. Yeah. Okay. Because Elon Musk said so. Yeah. Because he moves markets. Okay. So let's, we're going a little bit too fast. Let's yeah. uh, slow down. Let's go back. Let's go okay. back. <laughs> when, um, when would you recommend that somebody starts investing? Honestly, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, coming from finance world, I would suggest, you know, Get, get your money right you know mm-hmm. uh, first of all you know like if you have credit card debt make sure you pay off your credit cards don't don't invest money you don't have okay uh second of all um you know start you know building something for the future so always keep something to invest you know for the future to save stuff mm-hmm. uh, and then have some money to you know like to play i call it vegas money <laughs> okay because not exactly that you're gonna gamble at all like vegas but it's money that you're prepared to lose you know yes if you go to the casino you're prepared to lose the money you're bringing of course so, with the stock market, you're new. Uh, you got to be prepared to, you know, take some losses. We all, we all win. We all lose. Yeah. Okay. So, what percentage of somebody's income do you recommend that they invest? Uh, if you're in your fifties, if you're if you're you know older, 
uh, it's up to your own risk. Uh, I don't know. You know, it depends on the person on how well they're set up. Mm-hmm. But I would suggest at least, you know, at least five to ten percent. You gotta have money to actively invest into things that are going up. You know, the growth companies. Okay, so if you're uh, in your 50s, you say five to ten yeah, percent. Okay. If you're, if you're young, if you're a young guy, pay your bills. You okay. Know, first of all, you know, don't don't fall behind on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second of all, pay your taxes. Yeah. And then third, you know, if you have like twenty to thirty percent. You know, so pretty much three bucks out of ten bucks. Put in, put into something somewhere that's gonna grow, you know. Okay, so if you wanted to invest smart and you didn't want to be too aggressive, where do you think somebody should put their money? Um, like, let's say in their twenties, would you recommend like the S and P five hundred index? Yeah, absolutely. Index funds. I keep a lot. Of, I'd say my my the majority of my retirement money is in index funds. 100%, okay. You know? Okay, so you have retirement money and then you have money that you're willing to be very you know, be a trade. Okay. Yeah. So what what percentage of your money do you have in your retirement and then what percentage do you have uh, day trading? So I keep uh, like a quarter of my quarter of each paycheck goes to retirement and then I like pretty much like 10-15% uh, goes into day trading. Okay. So if somebody wanted to jump in a stock like Amazon that's done very well, is it too late to get into a big company like that or should they look for another company that's on the up and up? No, it's actually a great company to get into. Okay. Um, you know, I can wait. Uh, Jeff Bezos just stepped down of being the CEO today. So yep. I don't know if it's a great company anymore to invest in, but I mean, Amazon is Amazon yeah. and we'll always be buying stuff from there. So yeah. So it's never going to go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So besides Amazon, what are some companies that you think are just very safe? And if you want to put your money somewhere and not be too aggressive, what, what direction would you go? Yeah. First of all, I got to say, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Invest at your own risk. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you lose money, you make money. Mm-hmm. Hey, don't thank me and don't blame me. <laughs> but, um, I mean, if you're gonna invest something safe, you know, you gotta go after, you know, the big, the big boys, you know, the, you know, the, the, the things, you know, the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, you know, Netflix, you know, the safe stuff that's that's growing. Okay, so you um, you said you do some coaching as well. Mm-hmm. What type of what type of coaching do you provide to others that seek your advice? I help people get started. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of information out there, and you don't know, you know, which brokerage to start. So I help you get set up. You know, I help you, you know learn how to work the brokerages, um, you know, whether it's crypto or stocks, mm-hmm. I help you, you know, get, get started with your first couple of stocks, you know, understand how, how things move. Uh, I'm a, I'm a chart trader. Okay. So I teach about charts, you know, what to look for, when to get in, when to get out based on what's worked for me mm-hmm. and what I've learned from other people that has worked for them. So, yeah. So if, if somebody wanted to come in contact with you, how would they go about that? Uh, Instagram or Twitter, uh, at Diego double E. You know, follow me if you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll put the link down there so you guys can see it. Um, all right. So, do you have any stories about uh, anything crazy that has happened to you in the stock market within the last, you know, eight years? So many days. Crazy stuff, huh? Crazy stuff. Uh, you know, just just to you know, paint an idea there was possible and you know, good and bad. Yeah, uh, I got a couple of stories. Um, you know, just a couple of days ago, uh, the whole the GameStop stuff. The whole GameStop uh, story, you know, we got Ja Rule and like <laughs> Mia Khalifa and like, you know, just random people that bozos that got nothing to do with the stock market just commenting on it. Mm-hmm. Don't follow their advice. <laughs> when, when people like that comment on stuff like that, does it make a difference? Oh, absolutely. If they're talking, I'm out. <laughs> oh, so people actually listen to what Ja Rule has to say? Yeah. Why would anybody listen to what Ja Rule has to say about the stock market? Because he's on TV. <laughs> he's on TV. That's crazy. I mean, if you... He's fire festival, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't. He's not trustworthy. Yeah, you're not trustworthy. You know, you gotta follow. The rule of thumb for me is follow the people who have success. Mm-hmm. And when I look at you know social media and I have my people that I follow, it's people who who have tracked for for years now. It's not just some new account. Okay. It's people who I I know, you know, they're you know natural killers. You know, they they make you know six figures day in day out. You know, don't blink an eye over you know what's going on. Are these people that are uh, well known people? Or are they lesser known people that are more popular on Twitter. Lesser known. Okay. So that's the direction you would recommend somebody to go to find who you well, want. Well, it's like lesser known as not a celebrity or, you know, like a big time hedge fund guy, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, they're well known within the trading communities. Okay. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go into the GameStop thing, dude. What's your take on the madness that went on with GameStop? Is it good for the, good for the economy? Is it bad for the economy? What, dude, what do you think? I think, I think it's a great, I think what it, you know, what it accomplished is it helped get a lot of young people and a lot of people who are not actively looking to invest and get into it. Mm-hmm. I've had like a record number of people hit me up and just ask me, hey, what, what's up with the game stuff? What, what's your take? Just like we are right now. Mm-hmm. That's what got me to, you know, come talk to you. Yeah. And what it, you know, what people talk on Reddit and Wall Street bets and all, all this madness going on, CNBC and social media, you know, um, it, 
it just brought so much awareness and people were uh, like you know united into you know sticking it to the suits yeah and i love that i i love you know like that you know the, the hedge funds are you know wanting to make money off of us but for once people you know like they fuck these guys so let's make some let's make money and like go against their positions yeah so what so what happened behind gamestop and amc and uh, some other companies nokia mm -hmm. before uh, uh robin hood shut them up robin hood's the, the big broker uh, you know the millennials love it's free and it's got a it's got a pretty app and uh you know i'll take i'll have my take on that but uh, people just like you know went behind the stock followed these reddit boards and you know they, they they talk about diamond hands and holding the line and it's it's a lot of nonsense but there's money to be made and uh you know i trade charts like i said so i basically saw that you know there's a, a record number of volume meaning people trading it uh, day in day out so I thought it was a great stock to get into. Okay. I got in around fifteen dollars. Got around. Got out around four hundred. Um, and then smart by, move. A yeah, small move. Small move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but by by the time uh, by the time everybody was talking on TV, I was like, it's time to get out. Okay. Um, luckily, I was not using Robinhood. Um, I highly don't suggest Robinhood. Um, uh, for years now, I I I've known Robinhood's. It's. You know the story behind Robin Hood is you, the the guy that takes money from the rich to gives to the poor. Yeah. But when it comes to money, their big client is uh, you know the hedge funds. So they're taking from the they're taking from the poor and giving back to the rich. Exactly the opposite of what the Robin Hood stands for. Exactly. So you know they did they did a filthy move. They they close they close trading on us when you know when things were going good because uh, hedge funds were losing tons of money. They lost like five billion a day. Yeah. And don't quote me on that. But <laughs> but. You know they were losing billions a day, and they, you know, the hedge funds once once they got noticed that you know it's all on TV, everyone's talking about it. The people's moms and grandmas were talking about this. They were like, they're like, holy shit, dude, let's, we gotta close this down. And they basically went down to their client, Robinhood, and they said, hey, either you're with us or you're not. And obviously, they gotta pay their own bills. You know, mm -hmm. you know the CEOs of Robinhood, they gotta make their own money. So they put it out there that they're protecting consumers, but and then the they're, they're, they're protecting making, themselves. They're protecting themselves. They're protecting, you know big corporations that's horseshit okay i'm glad you explained that because a lot of people see it on tv but they really don't understand what's going on do you think something that happened with gamestop and amc could happen to other companies as well where the the average joe could come up again absolutely I actually made that's my bread and butter you okay know, um you know this this probably has been the biggest story i've seen of all time but you know and lesser known you know more more you know finance you know names uh, a couple years back there was this guy called martin true kelly who was spiking up the you know the prices of, of of medicine, and he made he's evil tons of fucking money on you know on this stock, mm -hmm. and he literally like it went up like a thousand percent like in a couple of days, and now he's in jail. But yeah, he's in prison it, right it now. Yeah, it goes to show the kind of people that are like behind these or or um I want to say back in I was still in college actually I was like I was like twenty one, wheat stocks were a thing. Wheat stocks are a thing now because of Mr. Joe Biden, president elect. Um, <laughs> So wheat stocks were just starting off back then, and uh, this company called Tilray got IPO'd, and uh, went from ten to I want to say it was like two hundred bucks within like two weeks. Wow! Tons of people were making money. So I, I've always you know kept track of these big stories. They're called supernovas. Okay. And they're available all the time. You just gotta be you know aware of them. What I suggest uh, if you, if you're an action trader like me, uh, always take a look at what's trending on on each broker. They always have like a top ten of the day. And see what the volume is behind it. See what's going on, on Twitter. People are talking about it. Not like a majority of people are, you know, mentioning it. It means that it's going somewhere. Okay. But be cautious too. Yeah, be cautious as well. Okay. So, uh, somebody like me that doesn't understand any of the terminology when it comes to stocks, where would you start? Would you go to Google? Would you buy a book? Um, for somebody that's a very beginner, where, where where should they begin to look at? how to understand what is going on in the stock market. That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, there's a lot of newbie traders. There's, you know, the TikTok finance now. Yeah. Uh, there's YouTube finance, there's Twitter finance, and there's a lot of just noise. Uh, some guys that really always, uh, you know, followed and I learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. I've been in their chat rooms, I've been to conferences. Um, uh, my investing club, I know I'm not sponsored or Spartan Trading or uh, investors underground uh, they have really good uh, free youtube videos and they have a lot of content that just you know they'll teach you step by step okay and it's free it's free okay wow um that's something i definitely need to get into 
All right. So you said you should put um, not too much money. You want to be safe. You also want to pay your bills first. Do you see commonly that a lot of people, instead of paying their bills first and doing the smart thing, they kind of gamble-ish and be very aggressive with their money from the get-go? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I say, you know, I say be safe, but I, you know, I personally haven't been known to, you know, be pretty reckless. Uh, back in 17, actually, you know, good story. Um, I, I, had, I had a little bit of money saved up. I was... I was uh, serv- serving full time, and I had you know I was making cash. Yeah. So I, I had a, I had a little bit of money saved up, and I had a I had a trip booked. I went to vacation, and just prior to going on vacation, I I heard about this thing called Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I decided to just you know put five hundred bucks, you know, just something that I would I would I really wouldn't care about. Yeah. And you know I went on vacation. I had no data. I had no idea what was going on. To you know, and I came back two weeks later, and that that position had tripled. Wow. Uh, at that point, yeah, I had made fifteen hundred bucks, and you know, this is the last time I'll, I'll say my numbers. But at that time, I had like twenty thousand saved up. I was just blown away what's going on. So I, I came back and decided, you know, I, I really don't have much that that much bills. Uh, whatever I didn't need to pay the bills that month, I just went all in. I, I put wow. all twenty thousand into crypto. Wow. Um, and it, was, <laughs> I, I wish it was a, a fairy tale ending, but. My first month, I actually, you know, that's why I say be careful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost half of everything I had. Wow. Put in my life savings, 20000 Within a month, I had lost half of that. And yeah, I, was, I was just getting ridiculed left and right by parents. They're like, I told you so. You shouldn't do this. But, um, you know, three years now, we can see that Bitcoin's still around and it's still, it's bigger than ever. And I saw this vision early on that technology, you know, changes uh cryptocurrency are you know it's it's the new thing you know it's digital money mm-hmm. it's used everywhere i've traveled all over the world uh you know europe asia and i've seen it being used everywhere uh, and so that kind of got my idea that you know i'm still pretty early in this stuff and i heard about it through some you know pretty influential context mm-hmm. and you know I, that same year in 2017 i went from making i had those you know 9k that my account called to <laughs> to it turned into several six figures and it was unbelievable. I, I I helped a couple people make some money along the way, a couple million dollars. A couple, you know, couple, <laughs> yeah, couple. yeah, just something small again. Yeah, yeah. but you know, it was, it was it was a good time until it didn't last. Uh, 2018 came around. There was a big market crash. Mm-hmm. You know, I lost the house on that. So I always say, you know, invest invest what you're ready to you know to lose. You know? Yeah, you're taking a gamble yeah. essentially. Don't get, don't get greedy. You know, I take it take it from my story. Don't get greedy. You know, when you make some money cash out and enjoy the profits. You know? All right, man, you mentioned cryptocurrency. So I talked to a lot of people that are invested in cryptocurrency. They're really um, st- uh, stoked about it, but they can't explain to me what cryptocurrency is. Mm. Can you give me a dumbed down version of what cryptocurrency is? I think of it like Venmo, or PayPal. Okay. You, know, you don't even look at the money. You're just like on an account and you send money to you know another account and you know it's, you, you get the message and that the person received it or, you know, you, that you received it okay same thing okay know? is it is it safe could you people steal your your cryptocurrency okay so here's the thing it's okay it's definitely it's safe but it's not safe in the fact that cryptocurrency gives you the option to become your own bank you're not del- relying on like the bank network so you can't you know if you lose your money like on a bank transaction at the atm you can always go to chase or whatever bank of america and, okay you know a you know complain a uh, a near refund mm-hmm. uh with cryptocurrency you're on your, you're your own bank there's no one you know backing you know this mm-hmm. so if you make a wrong transaction because you copied the address wrong basically the you know the the person's destination mm-hmm. it's a, like a big like alphanumeric long line mm-hmm. if you write something wrong you can definitely you know lose money wow has that ever happened to you no, but I know people who have, you know, so. And there's, like you said, there's nobody to call to get your money back. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, because it's unregulated. Yeah, so the, like, the, 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 the good thing is that most, most places where you, you know, buy or send or receive crypto, you can mm-hmm. copy and paste <laughs> from your phone. So as long as you're just copying and pasting, it's, it's pretty good to go. But always make sure that you check where you're sending your money. Okay. I so mean, it's just like Venmo, you know? Yeah, okay. So it's like, it's a digital wallet is what yeah. it is. Okay, so physically you can never touch your Bitcoin or whatever it is. Okay, so explain to me what the Bitcoin machines are because I know in Vegas they have some. Um, how, how does that work? How do you get your Bitcoin out of a machine? I mean, it's just like an ATM. Okay. So instead of, you know, putting... I mean, yeah, you definitely... You put dollars in and you... Instead of, you know, walking out with tokens, it's on your phone and, you you know, it's on your app uh, and you see it. You know, you have, you know, Josh, you have 
20 bitcoin i wish you know but yeah, yeah exactly um, you know it, it's just think of it like that just think of simple terms you know we know how to use venmo we know how to use mobile bank accounts okay it's the same thing don't there's no need to get into the technicalities in it because it goes beyond most of the smartest people in this world really but the 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 fact of the matter is it, it works and it's safe it's it's been running for 13 years now Wow, I didn't know it was that long. Yeah. Okay. So I know I only know that because when I started, it was ten years. So it's been three years since. <laughs> wow. So you were pretty early getting in. Yeah, I was pretty early, I guess. Um, you know, not as early as some of the people I met, uh, but yeah, definitely pretty early. What made you want to get into cryptocurrency? So some guys from previous uh, entrepreneurship, you know, ventures, um, I knew, you know, were, you know, they, um, you know, they're millionaires and they, they got they're they're successful business. Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, I remember one this one guy wrote. I'm starting to invest in Bitcoin, and he put this Coinbase link. Um, Coinbase is the like the biggest exchange or broker where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Okay. And you know, I decided to download the app, check it out. It seemed kind of safeish to me. I, I heard about Bitcoin and how how risky it was, and um, I was still, I was hesitant at first. So I like I said earlier, I I only invested like 500 bucks because at the time it's it's kind of what I would take to the casino. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went in with 500 bucks and, you know, I just, you know, decided to like learn as I went, you know, I, I tried reading to it and tried, tried to understand it all at once. And it's too much. It's a lot of information. It gets confusing. Even someone who like is in finance and see this day. It's day, even confusing day. for you. Yeah. I guess confusing to me, you know. So, okay. So, um, is it a higher risk, higher reward with, uh, with cryptocurrency compared to the stock market? So yes and no, there's. There's definitely just like the stock market. There's the safe stocks or like the big stocks that everybody knows and you know move kind of you know, uh, you know like a staircase. You know they go up over time mm -hmm. with, with cryptocurrencies. Um, it's a much newer market. Like I said, it's only ter 13 years old. So there's a lot of um, there's the bitcoins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin. There's you know the top 10 that you can find online. Okay. Uh, and then there's a, there's this other uh, projects called the altcoins, which are smaller coins. Uh, smaller blockchains or you know they do they have different purposes each coin has a different purpose okay and a lot of them are scams there's a ton of scams out there so always got to make sure you do your own research um you know there's um like back in the day amber i would hear more often i'm not really tied to that much people right now uh with crypto uh keep more to myself honestly <laughs> yeah other than the show but um back in the day people would hit me up like oh like my my coworker told me about this uh this coin and there was plenty of coins, so it's not. It's, it's There's a ton of coins. Too many to mention, but yeah, they, they, you know the story was always the same. They told me about this coin that's gonna be the next Bitcoin. It's gonna go. Oh, Every gonna coin's gonna be the next Bitcoin. Yeah, Every yeah. Coin is gonna be the next Bitcoin, and no coin is gonna be the next Bitcoin, guys. Like it's, it's you know, Bitcoin has established itself. Um, you know what brought my interest back after you know, three years of just watching it but not really being in the market. I just got into the market again last year. Okay. Um, because. Uh, banks, hedge funds, you know, institutions, you know, just, um, you know, and uh, university endowments, you know, just the richest people in the world are finally getting into Bitcoin and seeing, oh my gosh, like it's it's been around here for so long. We all thought it was, you know, dog poop, you know, that's literally like um, some of the biggest hedge fund, hedge fund managers said that. And now they ate their own words and they've been buying heavy. Wow. And they're the ones who, you know, fuel the comeback of Bitcoin. That's so, interesting. So it's not like back when I started, it was the Wild Wild West, and it's just a bunch of people buying pump and dumps. Now it's uh, now it's more establishments uh, buying and you know holding the prices up. So um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the safest and pretty much what everything runs on, mm -hmm. um, they've been getting bought up by, by banks, and you know. So if things go up and they go down, I I'm not as you know, I'm not as cowardly to you know like to hold through the drawdowns because I know that my money's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, so it's funny. You said the scams. It's not funny at all, but scams happen. <laughs> I actually was looking up cryptocurrency before you came on because I wanted to learn some more. And there's a coin and there they had the people that worked for this company or something. And it was like Ryan Gosling was one. The, his picture was one of the people and it was a scam, obviously. How do you d decipher which ones are scams and which ones are real? Like how much research do you have to put into that? So for those, yeah, I do I do a lot more research for the altcoins. Okay. Uh, when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, I I suggest you know if you're gonna get started into it, just buy a little bit, uh, week in week out, so you're not you know you're getting multiple prices. So okay. You're kind of like making a better price for yourself, a better average. But for these smaller coins, uh, you know if you're gonna invest, say you know one out of ten dollars into Bitcoin that you have, 
uh, for the smaller projects, I would suggest you know fifty cents out of every ten dollars you have, okay. because there's there's a higher risk, but there's also higher reward. You know, so definitely mm -hmm. you know go in with the mentality that you can lose all the, the whole amount. But these are the coins that have you know given the you know the thousand percent gainers, the ten thousand percent gainers. So there's a lot of money to be made, but uh, always look at the websites if you're gonna invest into these uh, smaller coins that someone tells you is the next bit, next Bitcoin or you know it's gonna go up. Always look at the website behind the coin. You know, look who's look who's behind it. They always have the founders and the teams. And, you know, try to do a little bit of research. You know, make sure that people look legit. You know, check LinkedIn's. You know, um, check that the uh, you can always check. Uh, the, there's this website called GitHub. Okay. Uh, I'm not a technical guy. I'm not a programmer. You know, I I can't tell you what it you know what these codes are, but behind every coin on GitHub, uh, which is like a Microsoft site, it's a it's a well known site. Um, you can see the activity behind the coins, meaning mm -hmm. the programmers behind each coin actually like going to the project and working on it. That's interesting. So if there's actual people, you know, development being done, it you know there's a, a little more, a little better chance that it's not a it's not a scam. <laughs> okay. So what are what are things you can buy with Ethereum and Bitcoin? Can you actually buy a house or buy a car with? Yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin? Yeah. If the if the buyer accepts Bitcoin or Ethereum, absolutely. Yeah. I personally have taken some vacations where I paid in uh, Bitcoin. Really? Yeah, Expedia takes Bitcoin, Ethereum. Um, you know, there's some other websites out there that you know take cryptocurrencies uh, that you wouldn't, you know, think about it. You know, you know, PayPal takes it. If you go to your local coin star, you can buy Bitcoin there now. Wow, um, that's interesting. Know, I mean, for you know, for all for all the nasties out there, you know, Pornhub takes it all. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, for you know, for for my uh, for people like me who like sports, you know, and gambling. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of online casinos that uh, take Bitcoin and Ethereum, and wow. that's actually you know, when when I want to you know place a bet online, I use Bitcoin actually. Really? Okay. So how how stingy are you with your Ethereum and your Bitcoin? Are you willing to spend it like that, or hell do you do you want to store it? Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. So uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, for like if I'm gonna invest, like you know, get into a sports book, I better not hold on to it for too long because I'm gonna you know regret spending it. But if it's just like a quick transaction, I I'll go on my Cash App. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, cash up, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, you can buy there and say 20 bucks and then just send it right to the site. So wow. it, it's instant. It's pretty easy to use. Once you get the hold of it, it's pretty easy to use. Okay. Would you recommend that somebody that's a beginner and doesn't know much about cryptocurrency or the stock market, should they get into both or should they get into one or the other? Yeah, get into both. You know, at, at this point, they're both going up and there's, you know, there's, we're a, a funny time in our lives where, you know, politics are a mess, you know, the economy's a mess. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of young interest in, you know, investing and stuff and monetary policy. Yeah, I'm not going to get too, too into it, but, you know, the, the Federal Reserve of the U.S. said that they're not going to raise uh, interest rates and they're going to keep printing money, which makes uh, the economy, you know, a big bubble right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of money to be made, but you can also lose a lot of money. So keep that in mind. Yeah, you're taking a huge risk. You're taking a huge risk, but right now, if you, if you were ever to invest and you know hope to get quick gains, it would be right now. Okay, what's safer for the future? Do you think it's the stock market or cryptocurrency? Historically, it's the stock market, you know? Mm. Historically, it's the stock market. Uh, but we're at a point where, you know, not a financial advisor, you, um, you know, the stock market will probably take a dip soon. So okay. uh, when, when the stock market is going down, Bitcoin is the, the safe haven that these people are moving to. Okay. A lot, a lot of people are moving their assets into Bitcoin and Ethereum because they see it as, as, uh, as a way to survive these stock market dips. What do you think the future is of cryptocurrency? Um, it's, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, still, it's still so young. Uh, just like the internet's only been around since the 90s. Uh, Bitcoin being around since like, you know, the 2008, 2009 makes it it's like, it's, it's limitless. It's limitless, right? There's no, there's no ceiling on these types of things. There's no ceiling. With all this money being made in cryptocurrency, uh, what's up with the tax situation? That's a great question, dude. I think, um, I think going to cryptocurrency that's one of the things uh, that should be taken into account. Uh, you know, no joke. Uh, you know, back in seventeen, uh, this was the wild, wild west, and they didn't know there was no regulation. But you know, eventually, like all parties, they eventually come to an end, and the U.S. wants to, you know, take a cut. And, you know, a lot of us suffered, you know, a lot of us suffered because people were, you know, just re right there, ready to take advantage of us. Um, you know, I had a, you know, I, I had a bad experience where I had to, you know, my, my day trading actually, uh, because of the way the laws were at that point, my day trading uh, made it that the taxes I owed on the crypto profits I had made uh, were way higher than any money I had ever made. Wow. So, um, you know. I held on to this, you know, to this debt for a couple of years and 
uh, in, tw in 2020, a law, a law passed that actually, you know, was able to, you know, pardon a lot of my, my debt, luckily, but it was a long three years. And, you know, I definitely, one thing I learned is don't, don't mess with the IRS, man. Like don't, don't mess with them. It's not a battle you want yeah, to get into. So, so what I recommend for crypto, if you're going to get started into that and trading is, uh, you know, buy to hold, buy to hold and, um, you know, take profits, um, at a good time, but don't, don't go in and out. No. No, no wishy-washy on crypto because you know the taxes are for real, and you don't want to have to you know have a headache of a you know a tax load. Exactly. Do you have any stories about um, your investments in cryptocurrency? Something that you are willing to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the scams, man. Like, okay, uh, you know, the, the, I've seen crypto evolve so much to from the day that when I got in, you know, things would go up 20, 30 percent overnight just because the company changed their logo or or updated their website. Wow. Uh, you know, like even me back in the day, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm guilty of it. Like I would just find, you know, a small coin and, you know, just kind of like put a couple like medium articles on Twitter and, and people would just and buy beforehand and people would buy it and I would just make cash and sell it. Really? So yes, it was the day of the pump and dumps, but yeah, nowadays it's a lot more complicated. It's not, it's not as easy to do that. It's not as easy to do that. So you would, uh, you some, you mentioned before the show that you would go days sometimes without sleeping or you'd be in the middle of the night checking up on, uh, yeah. on these things. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. So crypto compared to the stock market, uh, crypto is 24 mm seven. -hmm. So, you know, when you're asleep, it's still going. So your investments, you know, that's why if you're not willing to lose your investment while you're asleep, you know, don't, don't, over, don't be over leveraged and don't over invest. Okay. Um, but the stock market, you know, closes at, you know, depending where you're at, California time, you know, it opens at 6, closes at 1 p.m. So people can live their lives and they're not constantly checking their exactly. phone. Yeah. So would you would you notice that your sleeping patterns would be off because you just needed to check what was going on in the cryptocurrency world? Well, yeah, back then, uh, I was, like I said, I was all in and, you know, you know, price movements would be like hundreds, thousands of dollars and it would just be like, it was so, it was so so much anxiety <laughs> yeah so much adrenaline all the time that you know you can really live a normal life you can't live a normal life like yeah. that but now it's it's a lot safer i i, I just you know just invest in the big coins and uh and the big coins uh like bitcoin and ethereum and just just hold on to it and, you know if it goes up it goes down i know that overall is going up because, okay you know i'm i trust the technology behind it and everything so it's 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 a lot less exciting than <laughs> it was back then all right um is there anything else you want to add yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you know, like I said, if you're any of you want to you know, know how to get started or, you know, need some advice, go ahead and, you know, hit me up on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, at Diego Double E, you know, and, you know, go ahead. I'm going to talk to everybody. Perfect. All right. So you heard himself. I'll put the links in the video. Uh, contact this guy, man. He puts the work in. He knows what he's talking about and he's going to help you out or he's going to do his best to help you out. So um, make sure you give him a call, text him. Um, if you need contact information, you can write to me. I'll give it to you as well. Thank you guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.